I love creating videos about how to save money on cruise ships and how to really get the most value for your vacation dollar. But there's one thing that we all own that is the most precious of all assets, and that's our time. Today, we're going to talk about how to save some time when you go on your cruise vacation. Stay tuned. Hi everyone, Rob from Cruise Seekers, and today we are going to learn how to save the most important thing of all things that we all own. We all have an exact finite amount of it, and it is our time. Everybody is allotted 24 hours a day. We all get to decide how we are going to use those 24 hours. We're going to learn today how to make the most of those 24 hours when we are on vacation on our cruise ship. When you get on a cruise ship, you're going to be bombarded with all sorts of things that you're going to need to do, things that you want to do, things that you feel that you have to do when you get on a cruise ship. Everything basically will compete for your time. So when you're on a cruise ship, and you're just dealing with things that you say, man, this is just such a time waste. It just makes you mad. It makes me mad. I'm not very good in lines. I'm not very good when I waste time. It just makes me a little bit, I guess you could say salty. I guess that's the word, right? It just drives me nuts. So today we're going to talk about how to make sure Rob is not salty or how for you to not be salty, how to save some time on these cruise ships and on our cruise vacation. Let's get started. One of the very first things you're going to want to do to save some time when you get on your cruise ship is make sure you check in exactly when you can check in so you can get an early time slot to get on board. That's going to save you some time right off the bat. You're not going to have to deal with lines with the buffets. You're not going to have to deal with a lot of people on the ship to get your reservations done. Definitely grab an early time slot by checking in when you can. Check for your cruise line. See when your check-in date is. Make sure you go to the cruise line's website to log on so you can check in at midnight on that day. Now, midnight, that's a sliding term. If your ship is leaving from Miami, that's going to be midnight Eastern time zone. If your ship is leaving, say, from Galveston, that's going to be central time zone midnight. And say if your ship is leaving out of, say, Seattle for an Alaska cruise, that's going to be midnight Pacific time. So always understand that's what midnight means for your check-in time. Make sure you take care of that. Do it as soon as possible. Grab an early time slot to board the ship. So now that you have your early check-in time, you're going to be able to get to the terminal earlier than everybody else. Most likely you will not be able to get on the ship right then and there. You're going to have to wait in the terminal until they open the ship you know, in essence, they call it cleared for new passengers to come on. They're basically making sure everybody is off the prior cruise. It's at a zero count of people on board so they can start letting people on for the new cruise. Before that happens, you're going to be sitting in that terminal, but you might be able to connect to the ship's Wi-Fi at that time. If you can, do it. The reason why you're going to want to do this is because you might be able to actually start your reservations for your specialty dining through the cruise lines app at this time, rather than having to wait till you get on board. So yeah, check to see if you can actually connect to the ship's Wi-Fi while you're waiting in the terminal. You might be able to book your reservations for your shows, your specialty dining, all those things right then and there before you even step foot on the ship. And since we're talking about reservations, one of the things I would like to say right off the bat, some cruise ships, when you're booked on them, you might be able to get reservations for your shows before you even get near the terminal a few months, maybe two months beforehand, depending upon what class of you know ship that you're on, depending upon what kind of room you have. You might be able to book your shows for your ship right from the comfort of your own home couple months before you get near the ship. So if you have that opportunity, take it. Most likely, if you're in a Facebook group, you'll get notifications from that group about, hey, we can now book shows. Then you can do it right away and you don't have to worry about it. It's taken care of. And another really good way to save some time and also save some money is pre-book everything. If you're going to buy a drink package, book it before you get near the ship. If you're going to buy some specialty restaurant dining, book those packages well beforehand. This way you can kind of get those reservations taken care of for specialty restaurants. You can have your drink package already taken care of. You don't have to go to the bar and get that all taken care of. It's all done for you. Take care of all your stuff that you want pre-purchased done ahead of time. It will save you money. It will save you time. Both things are aces in my book. Now I'm gonna give you a really cool tip on how to avoid lines for these amazing attractions on the cruise ship. 
be one of the first people at those attractions or at those venues. Do some research ahead of time. Know which music venues are going to be hot. You know if you're going on Norwegian Cruise Line, Sid Norman's is going to be very busy. Go to the first show because all the other shows, the lines are going to be crazy once people realize there's a good show going on over there. So be one of the first. Or if you want to be one of the first people on the Flow Riders, pack your swim gear. Get on the Flow Rider the first day. The lines are not going to be as crazy. Same with the slides. Now let's talk a little bit about saving some time when you are eating on a cruise ship. Number one, don't go to the buffet on day one. It's just going to be tons and tons of people, lots and lots of lines. Find an alternative dining location. Every ship has one. Go to there instead of the buffet. Second thing is think about traditional dining versus my time dining. Traditional dining, you'll just be able to go to your table when your time is to eat and you just go and eat. You know exactly when you're going and you know exactly about how long it's going to take. If you don't do traditional dining, you might have a beeper to say, hey, come at this time when the beeper goes off. You might have to miss dessert because it might be starting to infringe on your show time. Yeah, it's going to save you some time by using traditional dining versus my time dining. I usually do traditional dining specifically because I like to know exactly when I'm going to sit down to eat. I don't want any of this sliding scale stuff. Well, that's a lot of information we already went through. I got a lot more left, but before I get into the rest of how to save some time when you are on a cruise ship, I would just like to ask if you are not currently a member of the Cruise Seekers crew and you're enjoying this video, think about subscribing. Turn that notification bell on. We do a lot of videos like this, how to save time, how to save money, how to understand how this package works or that package works, or better yet, how to get a real good deal on a cruise. We have a whole episodic series called Cruise Deals where I put out a good, good deal that you can jump on to save some money on a cruise. So if these type of things interest you, think about subscribing and turn that notification bell on. Thank you so much. It is so appreciated. Another thing you should do when you first get on the ship is kind of get your bearing straight when you get on the ship. Understand all the little tricks about the ship. Some ships have little tricks to say, hey, this color of the carpeting is this side of the ship, while this color of the carpeting is on this side of the ship. If you look at the floor and you see little like you know, triangles or fish pointing in one direction, that's how you go forward. If you see it pointed in the other direction, that's how you get to go to aft. You learn those things that will get you a real good bearing when you're in the ship because sometimes you can get yourself turned around. The other thing is just walk all the public spaces. Know where everything is ahead of time. This way, when you want to get to a certain venue for a certain activity, you know exactly where the heck to go. You don't have to worry about trying to find it on a map. You got a good understanding where it is. So yeah, learn the little tricks that the cruise line gives you on how to navigate yourself around the ship. Learn where everything is right off the bat. Do this like right after you finish eating and right before you go to your room for the first time. It's a great thing to do. You should do it too. Since we're talking about getting accustomed to your surroundings, one of the things I love to do before I get near my cruise ship is kind of really do some research about the ports of call where we're going to be at. Where's the port located on the island? What kind of what can I expect on where I can find taxis? Where can I find, you know, third party excursion locations for a pickup if I book the third party excursion? I try to really get myself familiar with the port of call things that I need to know in order for me to navigate myself from the ship to wherever I need to be. Do this well ahead of time, get it all printed out on a piece of paper, and then understand exactly where you need to go when you get off the ship. It will save you a bunch of time rather than just trying to figure it out, trying to wing it, and having to be on a phone and trying to communicate with the other person on the phone where you're trying to meet people up with in a place that you're not very familiar with. Get all your ducks in a row. It will make your life a lot easier and it will save you time. Another little trick I like to do if I ever need to talk to guest services, there are certain times when guest services is going to be the least crowded and that's A, usually during some sort of eating time frame, right? Between 12 and 1.30, usually pretty quiet. Between 5.30 and 7.30, usually pretty darn quiet. Later in the evening, when people are already tucked away in bed after the last show or in between the last show, usually a pretty quiet time. Try to take care of anything you need at guest services during these quiet times. That's when you're going to have the least amount of lines. If at all possible, try to avoid going to guest services on the last day of the cruise. That's when the lines are the longest. You know, just try to figure out a way to avoid it at all costs. Also, 
early morning, that's usually another great time to go visit guest services if you need them for whatever reason. And another thing too, when a lot of times you're talking to guest service, kind of go prepared, have all your ducks in a row, have your backup paperwork that you might need saying, hey, I already pre-purchased this. I don't understand why I'm getting this charge so that you have your, well, your, again, ducks in a row. You want to make sure you have all your information. So a lot of times I keep a lot of printed copies of all the things that I've purchased pre-planned, all those type of things. Same thing when I go on third-party excursions. I have everything all printed up. I know exactly what I need to do and where I need to go and who I need to talk to when I get to the port. Definitely print your things up, get them all in a row, make sure you kind of organize them and when you might need to use them, have them in like little I guess a little, um, either a little binder and then kind of paper clip the things that are related to each other so you can easily grab them. I usually color code them. I know I'm a nerd. <laughs> it's just the way I am. I'm pretty darn organized. So that's what I do. I think it's a great way to save time when I need to get information quickly and kind of convey that information to other people. And one final bonus tip that I want to give, and now this one is not for everybody. It's really for people who really do value their time more so than they value their money. There are people that just have a decent amount of money and they have the budget and they want to be able to like save some time and they're willing to give up some money to save some time. And that's what I call purchasing perks, right? You can go into a suite or a cashier class level type of room that will save you some time because you have access to these special people that can help you save time. You know, a concierge desk in the suite lounge or a concierge desk somewhere in the ship for concierge class, veranda class rooms or whatever it may be. They do have different options, many different cruise lines to be able to purchase perks. Even Carnival has a way to purchase perks. There's a thing called faster to the fun. It's just a way to purchase some perks to save some time. If you value your time more so than your money and you think it's worth it for the price, then you can purchase some perks to save some time. There you go, folks. That's my tips and tricks on how to save time on your cruise vacation. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. It really does help the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any questions about these tips that I've given, leave them down below. We love comments. I always answer to every comment that's given to us. And if you have your own time savings technique when you go on a cruise vacation, leave that down below too. I would love to hear your ideas. And if you already made it through this long video and you have not become a member of this Cruise Seekers crew, hey, think about subscribing already. Turn that notification bell on. Don't make me come there. So until we talk again next time, this is Rob from Cruise Seekers reminding each and every one of you to always seek the seas. Bye now.